welcome to the Laughing Monkey Music Show. Today we've got Atomic Bitch Wax. How you doing, guys? Doing good. 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 Obviously, we could, uh, 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 Chris uh, and Garrett uh, are all here. Just we're having a yeah. fun little Zoom Zoom class. Oh, here. And, uh, it's pretty fun. It's the first time for these guys, which makes it even more fun and uh, flattering. So I want to thank you. Uh, been a big fan for a long time. And uh, I'm glad we could get some time between all your, your touring and dates. Uh, on a break because you guys were pretty busy playing out a lot, as I as I've seen. When are you guys yeah. looking to go back out yeah. next? March. We're going out with yeah. Nebula in uh, all of March. Wow. Yeah. It's just a, a it's a U S tour. U S tour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now we, we we played a bunch of shows with Nebula in Europe for like you know, a couple of weeks over the summer mm -hmm. and it, it went really well we're like we should just do this at home and so it you know got the people talking to the people and made it happen so well i imagine a lot of you guys are friends too so it makes it much more fun to tour with friends you know yeah oh, yeah they're so those guys are so easy to get along with they're so laid back they're super california you know what i mean it's, yeah yeah totally super fragilistic I like. I knew, I knew that was coming. Like as I was saying it, I'm like, <laughs> I like. like super lob, I'm like lobbing ones to Garrett. Go ahead. <laughs> That's right, Garrett. We lost you for a minute. I don't know. If we can hear you. We can't see you. Garrett, where are you, man? I don't, I don't there know. You go. Dude, he's all glitching out. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> Dude, That's what are you, man? Dude, what do you use? The fifty-six K. Dude, go closer to the router, man. <laughs> he has an AOL dial-up disc. He's running out of minutes. <laughs> um. Dude, do you guys ever hear? You guys ever hear this thing called Instagram? Yeah. I'm, thinking about, I'm thinking about trying it. Yeah, you might. <laughs> right after that, YouTube, then Instagram. I'm gonna, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff I haven't tried yet. You could. You can oh. link it to the MySpace page, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't get a lot of traffic on that one anymore. Weird, right? It's a lot of tumbleweed, probably, right? <laughs> like, old, like old ghost town. Um, I know if I see uh, someone has a MySpace site, I'm like, I don't think that band's active anymore. I think I think they're kind of they're done. <laughs> it's kind of like quitting. Oh my god, really? So I was going to say, and, and before we jump into music and start talking, I want to say the fact that you guys did an album with one song is bananas. Awesome. But nice. bananas, I love it. Um, what was the the idea behind that? I mean, I, I know I want to talk about a new album, but like that album to me is just like it's so so creative that you guys did. I mean, I know a few bands in the genre do it like that, but it's a lot of different songs, not like a long song. I think. Well, what we what we started off doing was just making, like you know, like I guess the the way that we write is someone will come to practice with a riff. Maybe they'll come with a couple of riffs and we'll beat them to death and see if they go anywhere. And mm -hmm. like we work, we work really fast. So it's like, if it sucks, we know right away and it's gone. But then we have the ones that we keep. Right. And so we'll just record like, you know, like a loop of us playing that riff over and over and over. And then we were saving like a library of them. We had like, you know, 50, 50 different song ideas. Yeah. And it was like, rather than try to write, you know, separate songs out of them, let's try to connect them all. And that's, that's really how it happened. That's crazy. Is that, it's so insane. When I first heard that, I was like, what's going on? You know, it's a, it is like 50 different songs, but it all works together. You know, I know you don't have to worry about lyrics for it. That was just a, a nice little musical thing. I, I can't yeah. remember. I can't remember what, uh, what songs they were, but on the last two records, I like, pillaged the local fuzz for a couple of riffs to use on the newer records so i was like you yeah, know that riff is too good to go like only cool. have it for like 20 seconds you know what yeah. i mean because we would you know play the yeah. riff like you know eight times 16 times and it was it that was it forever I don't it's think not it's called pillaging if it's your own it's, i think it's called revisiting i think yeah, <laughs> yeah not revisiting Re I don't oh, think reworking yeah <laughs> and giving it love well and that's the thing I lo and to me i always say there's a few things it's like the, the test of an, of, a, of, a, of an album with a group is um you listen to it a few times you can listen to it in your car you can listen to it like when you're doing some work like some thinking work and then like if you right. listen to it, like when you're like doing like yard work or something you know what i'm saying there's different times you can listen to it 
simple with that album right there. It's the best because it's it's it uh, it's got a great pace to it, but it's no lyrics or anything to it. So it's not like it's throwing me off thinking about it. So I'm just jamming to it no matter what I do. It's got a great yeah. little, you know what I mean? It's very consistent. I, I, I'd actually, I'd really like the opportunity to remix that whole thing because, okay. uh, well, like we were doing it like, I, I don't know. I, I wasn't very good at it yet. And, uh, you know, I got a lot of help from different people asking a million questions, but, but, uh, I think the performances were there. I think it was just the fidelity of the whole thing could have been a lot better. So like, I don't know, one of these days, the next pandemic, <laughs> I'll probably, <laughs> you know, dive into that one. Yeah. I did it. Maybe one, one apocalypse every 10 years now or is that we're looking at now? Yeah, you know, I think that's going to be the new norm every 10 years. How did you, you guys do? Like, because you guys are you know, big touring, you know? Well, it, yeah, I mean, it sucks for the band, but I mean, you know, Outside of that, I mean, I don't know. I, I got lucky. I had a lot of work, so it, it, I didn't really, you know, suffer or anything. I was just bummed out we couldn't play. Right. Well, so. I can see that being a challenge. And I'm hearing that a lot of bands, especially in this genre, are doing gangbusters now. Like, the fans are like, oh, my God. I didn't know what I had until it was gone, you know? <laughs> you know, that's the feeling I'm getting right now from a lot of the fans. Are you guys seeing that? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. People, people are coming out. A lot more than they used. To. Yeah, but I think I think it's always been like that though. That that since like the late '90s, there's always been like this ebb and flow with the whole thing. Like you know, around the 2010s, it sort of died out, and then it kind of came back again in the teens, and then it sort of you know the pandemic didn't help. Oh yeah, you know, well, you well you, you were the original. So you I mean you start through you got through the grunge area too. And I hate to use that term, but that was the popular thing. So if you're not the in thing, you know. Of the moment, I mean, you, the, your band crossed crossed over genres. I don't right. think it's a genre, but then, like when grunge went down, you just kept going. You were your own thing. You know what I mean? You like your own, your own style, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I I, I, I I like to think. I mean, I mean, really, we're just really a rock band, progressive know, rock. But... Band, you know what I mean? But but uh, um, but I think all all the, all those all those influences from you know seventies, eighties, nineties, you know what I mean? Like it's all that those are all, all the years that we all the music that we like. Right. Well, I you think know? that's what it comes down to is a good good songs are always gonna come back. There might be a fad. There might be, you know, somebody with twenty thousand followers on Instagram. You should check it out. <laughs> and um <laughs> but I don't know if I you. trust I don't know if I trust those numbers. You could buy those numbers. Well, and, and that's my point, is like when you see somebody playing i mean that's and that's the world that musicians have to go with now i, I want to see somebody fill a club now i want to see these people with forty thousand followers twenty thousand that haven't toured their new artists play right. some clubs like what is that going to mean is that is it going to fall through the ground and people are going to go back to realizing that artists that are touring they're going to put the get behind them again the companies you know what i'm saying like right the real stuff we'll see but at this point i think you guys have gotten past the need for it having all the old-fashioned way anyhow right yeah, I don't even know how. I don't even know how the newer bands are doing it. You know what I mean? It, we're just we're three guys in a van. <laughs> and that's like that's the only way that we know that it works. You know, I couldn't imagine yeah. that at this point. Yeah, but the band started pre-internet, really. I mean, not pre-internet, but pre-social media. Yeah, so, I mean, you already had the kind of a base there already. So, I mean, if you know, I wouldn't definitely not start or start a band now from scratch yeah, from the that, bottom up yeah you know? i don't even know how it would almost impossible it's too much information too much coming at you i mean i'm to just to get through somehow i don't know but what is yeah. it like 10 000, 20 000 songs a day are being uploaded to spotify or something some like crazy numbers like yeah. without a fan base how are you even going to do that now oh, you know? I, I mean I, i'm really bummed out now <laughs> <laughs> No, but I mean, even I, me, I think like, I'm actually saying a low number two. So, yeah. really? oh, <laughs> you might need a box of clinics when we're done. Yeah, <laughs> I'm all I'm all patting myself on the back. Ten songs a year. <laughs> yeah. No, with the fact that we're talking right now that you guys have a fan base, you should be patting yourselves on the back. You guys are still doing it. You guys have established, yeah. you know, like real instruments, real doing it. I mean, where are the jokes now? You see online people with the uh, laptops and stuff. You guys oh. are just, you know, it's soul crushing to think that, you know. In fact, it's all drums, good. Whatever, guitar, bass, whatever and it takes, whatever it takes to break through. If it works for you, it works. That's great. But I'm all I'm saying is, uh, is uh, you know, 
is it's so much information out there and it's so hard to break through it's not like there's any big big record companies anymore where they sign all all types of bands and they push the hell out of you it's like you know you have so much to choose from i mean even me you know, my music choice i yeah i listen to there's so much to listen to i get confused and i don't even know what to listen to sometimes because <laughs> there's so much information you know you, get, and you sound got like fingertips you know it's not like putting on an album and you just let it Oh, all right. I got to sit with this. You know, I'm going to sit with this for an hour. You know, you can go from song to song, from band to band, like within, you know, a millisecond. So, you know, I do that. It's so much. Yeah. You know. it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. You, when you describe yourself as like Henry Fonda and Golden Pond getting lost in the woods there on music, it's, it's the, uh, <laughs> the the equivalent of that, right? <laughs> Golden you old Pond. poop. No, it's like, you guys wow. have that old reference, right? That's We're going to break this old school, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're all the same age group here. Um, I think what I want to say before it was sort of a total jerk, just a small jerk, is with the keyboard, with the um, the laptop thing, is the band couldn't play. Now, if say that was part of your background sound or your vocals or, or additional pieces, like if it didn't show, you couldn't play. You'd be like oh, that's fine, put it aside. We're gonna rough it out. We're gonna just play with our guitar, bass, and vocals. See what I'm saying? But to be like, we can't play because our key, our, you know, our laptop's not working is kind of a, it's 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 sad. You know, you can't the band can't play that way. You know. So what do you think, Chris? Should we try it? <laughs> I want to do one of the concerts where everybody wears headphones. You know yeah, what I mean? That. You, you know, guys like, just get on Zoom for the first time, and now you guys are ready to <laughs> take on cyberspace. <laughs> Maybe we could just put a giant screen on the stage, and we could Zoom it in. Yeah, you we'll could. Zoom it in. Oh. You could just stay at home. We could tour from home. Ooh. We could tour from home while I watch my stories. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Some girlfriend. bands have been practiced that way. You never know. You know, I don't. I don't think I could do that as a band, especially be a new band. I couldn't imagine that. Yeah. Nah. Then you know you can't see each other's dirty looks and stuff. You know, if you practice, you know, just, you know, like this. Well, that, that's the whole point. Difficult you're done. to communicate. You but know then what? you can just end it and go up to see Netflix. They're done with you. Then having to sit there and talk to you in the parking lot for twenty minutes after the gig's over. If you guys are playing, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, all right, guys, I gotta go. And then twenty minutes later, you guys are talking about the car. You're like, dude, I said I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I missed that. Yeah. So that <laughs> was Zoom. You're like, oh, gotta go. Bing, button's gone. Oh my god. You know? Right. That's a nightmarish thought, though. Like so, rehearsing or even performing all the time on this thing, you know. I think it's been a good tool. Some bands have been able to make it that are in different. Some bands are in different continents at this point, and they're playing and they're right, recording during Zoom. I mean, with Zoom. How did you guys do for um, this new album? You guys, your newest album, Scorpio. How how did you guys did you write that during COVID or it came out in twenty twenty two? Before, right before COVID, it was before. And both, right. wow, we, we had yep. we had. We were on an American tour at the time, and we were maybe what two weeks into it. Yeah, and, and uh, we were in Chicago, and little by little, like clubs were uh, that were you know two weeks ahead of us mm -hmm. were shut down because of the pandemic. So, like first, it was like one club, and they were like, "All right, well, we could still we we could do the tour and miss a show." Then it was two shows, then it was five shows, and it was like, "Oh, there's no point in going now." Yeah. Because all, all those uh, jump off points were like, you know, the whole thing was fucked. And it's funny, like now with musicians, I, you can almost say like, where were you when? And a musician's going to remember where they stopped playing that night, that gig. It was decided for COVID. Like, that, like where, where were you when? They, you, you know, an artist is going to know that moment because it changed so much. Yeah. Chicago, right? Yeah. <laughs> See? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But, I think but, we got like two weeks in and then that was it. It was supposed yep. to be a month or something, and I think we got a couple of weeks at least in, and then we were like, "Oh shit!" And we're like, "No, nah, man, we got all these dates coming up. We had summer tour coming up, and then uh, like we got kept getting calls from home, like, no, this is serious, man. This is shutting down. <laughs> like, you know, there's going to be no playing left." And we're like, "Yeah." I couldn't no imagine being on the road too, because you're here, you're in different towns, different states, and everyone's saying different things. You just have no idea. You're just like, "I just want to put my head down and keep going," you know, until you yeah, the whole exactly. planet got to engage. You know, know, funny is uh, they when we played that last show in Chicago, we actually got we did an interview outside the outside of the club. Remember for that guy, like he wanted to see our van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, this so this guy's got some website where he like interviews bands with whatever they're traveling in. Oh, I've seen I've, I've seen one of those at least. I don't know if that's the same one. Yeah, yeah. And so well, so we did one, and it was it was it was that day in Chicago. And it's funny because while we're doing the interview, we hadn't really decided or anything that we were going to go home with right after the show. 
so this was during the afternoon and we were still you know we're still like yeah. we're on tour you know what i mean <laughs> but you know, hours later like you know yeah, where we, we were talking back. about the upcoming uh tours too i think we had a summer tour and we yeah. just go to japan in the fall or something yeah we're promoting something like that it, but now think about it. If you go back and look at it, people aren't going to look at the dates because once you know, these past few years, everything got kind of like fluid, right? As far as dates and everything. So people go back and look at the video and they'll have no idea. They're just they're like, when was this date? Yeah. And they, they won't understand. They'll think that you were actually on tour. They won't realize that it was a time thing. You know, yeah. I'll post something on my page and someone will be like, when was this done? And it literally says in the interview when it was done when you tell them. So, you know, it may play to the, the benefit of the magic of it instead of being the last day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys. You guys had to sit in the album, though. That kind of sucks, considering you guys seem like you guys write a lot of music. And then you had to sit on it for, like, two years? It really sucked. Yeah. It still sucks. What was this? I mean, did you guys want to put it out? I mean, because I know some bands wanted to put them out, and some bands didn't. And then some people's labels are like, no. You know? Well, we didn't, we didn't know how long it was going to last, you know, the pandemic. Yeah. So, it, we, it, you know, let, what do we? it could be years, and it was. So well, I'm glad we put it out. What can you do? You know, so... We we toured on it this year, and in, um, we're going to continue touring on it in March. It's a it's a good album. It's a good rock album. I mean, it's hard because each of your albums sounds so different in a way. I mean, there, there's a common link if you listen to the band, but they really do have a different feel to them. Is that conscious when you guys do the albums, or I think it's just you know where we recorded and stuff like that. You know, it's just uh, just trying to improve the sound all the time. You know, so right. So and, and, uh, you know, you know, in some songs we at, we play live before we ever record them, yeah. And so those seem like the more developed ones, you yeah. know what I mean. And then some songs we just write to record it, you know what I mean. Like we, yeah. But we're never, we don't have any plan to ever play it live, but like a really, yeah, you know, like Alaskan thunderfuck. Yeah, you know, I mean that would be great if we did do it, but you guys also have know. some great names too, some great great artwork and some great names for the song titles too. That's so, so you actually, you, wow, you actually would record songs that you know you're not going to play live. Well, yeah, I mean, after, after we record it and we listen back to it, we look at it, we're like, there's no way. <laughs> yeah. Or, or some, sometimes, like, uh, you know, I'll write the lyrics after we wrote the music and then realize I can't play that riff and sing at the same time. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, just like, All right, I maybe we, maybe you guys do need a laptop or or something or speak and spell. Yeah, yeah. A speak and spell like is probably better for you. <laughs> I'm gonna look into this laptop thing. <laughs> yeah. <We're still> like... <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, yeah, this album is great. I'm gonna encourage people to check it out too. Um, and check out all the albums, but this one it actually feels like you. Uh, it just it feels like a very happy album. I hate to say, like it feels like a very smiley album. You listen to it, it feels very upbeat. Yeah, I, I'm glad it does. I think it should be. I, every, right. you know, it's 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 really easy to do the doomy macabre fucking riff. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. been done to death. You know what I mean? Well, you guys don't usually so. sound doomy anyhow. But I'm saying, but this album really feels like I have a smile on my face when you hear. Like it feels like it's really, really fun. Like yeah. you're on your way. Like you're on your way home from work on a Friday. Yes. Yeah. I was listening to it in the car today, yeah, just yeah, kind right? of getting in the mood, and it feels yeah. good just listening to it in the yeah. car. It's a good cruising song. Yeah. You know? it's, the, it's the big weekend record. Yeah, <laughs> it is. I just felt like I needed the warmth for it too, because I mean, you guys are what Jersey guys. I mean, I'm in I'm in Connecticut. I mean, it's cold. I'm like, you know, yeah. I can use today, a little bit of the warmth for that. You know, today was today wasn't so bad. No, you know, but it's definitely getting cooler now. I got to I'm like standing with I'm not allowed to smoke in the house, so I'm down in the basement with the door <laughs> open. So I tour you can smoke wherever you right? Yeah, that's the new world, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Right? And nobody smokes, just me and Bob, and that's it. That's it. You have a whole industry to keep <laughs> everybody, going. Everybody quit. Yep. I came up the other day and I said to somebody, I'm like, how much does it even cost for a cart? Isn't it like a hundred dollars? Like it's something crazy. It's like a lot I roll of money. My, I roll my own. Do you? Oh yeah, I got the machine. It's a whole thing. It's great. It's a whole thing. Well then uh -huh. now you're now you're now you're doing like it. Now you're now you're more of a ceremony guy. And it's more like when you get listening to that like an album where you know, where vinyls you get the album, you get take out a sleeve and you open it and you get the artwork you can look at the pictures and, and you, then you actually know who actually worked on the album and the song Absolutely. credits you know yeah which actually is a good time for you guys doing a special edition with, with um the live album doing vinyl yeah absolutely yeah yeah i, th I, mean, I think it, 
I, I think a lot of the older songs are like way more realized now after so many years of playing mm -hmm. them that I like these versions of the songs better. So hopefully, you know, anybody that was into the band in the, you know, old days, you know what I mean? That they, they would appreciate like the new, a, a newer spin on this, you know, you know, cause we don't, we don't play note for note as, as the record is, you know what I mean? Right. Well, they, they mutate over time, every, yeah. you know. But they mutate in a better way where I, when I when I'm playing it, I'm like, man, I wish this was on the fucking record. You know, like, why is this part on there? You may have to do re-record your own greatest hits. While you're, you know, <laughs> I, you know, I I know for a fact that doing something like that won't work because Chuck Berry did it and, and it, nobody bought it. Right. It, something had happened where he got fucked out of all of his right, you know, his uh, rights to well, the song. Really. Something. Uh, or or those per the, the those actual recordings he didn't own them. So maybe that's what it was. So I think just, there's something going on. Chuck had a lot going on. There's a lot of Chuck Berry stories and other stuff he did yeah. too behind the scenes that I've heard. Yeah. Oh, no. Some of his some of his some of his films and adventures that I've heard are from behind the scenes are uh, <laughs> he, has, he has so many issues. I wouldn't compare yourself with him. I do know a lot of, I do know a lot of artists though have actually re recorded their stuff to work around the record labels from from you know beating them up. Right. But to this, I'm, I'm not even saying that for you. I'm just saying it, you're, as the songs are kind of, you guys have got your own groove now, the three of you, you know, you have fun doing it that way. You know. Is, Ga is, is Garrett trying to join us? He's I back in. I just let him in. He's got like ADHD. Know, can you hear me? I can hear I, you. Can, can hear you. Can't yeah, see. I don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> are you walking around? Because it's like you're dropping the signal. Come on, man. Yeah, you don't know how to Zoom? Is there a metal plate somewhere in your head? Is that what's going on? <laughs> yeah, the my Wi-Fi. Hey, oh. it's all good. It's all good. No, you're not. I can't. I don't know. I can hear you. No, I like the picture of you. Oh, there, there you go. There you go. Yeah, it's fine. Do your back. See. There you go. Wait, hold on a minute. Ah, let me get my hearing aid. <laughs> <laughs> Are you can in the gar bar? Can you put yeah. like different? Can you put different backgrounds? Like, is there like a green screen thing? I actually think. Oh, I was like, I have one called immersive. I haven't done it yet. Let's see what it does to everybody. Oh, yeah. that's, <laughs> oh, that's, that's awesome. That's ridiculous. Oh, I'm in Thailand. What else we got here? I can't see which one. Oh, there I am. <laughs> now we're in an official oh, business this, meeting. This is great. <laughs> this wow. is so stupid. I, Look at it. Look at Fired. Fired. Oh my God. This is ridiculous. This is stupid. All right. I'm going to do one, do one more here. The last one. Oh, we're all in school now. We're in a lecture. Wait. Look, huh? <laughs> look, we finally got in school. Oh my God. Oh, okay. Here we go. All right. Here we go. All right. And we're back. I'm glad we could, I'm glad we could all share that together for the first time. That was pretty. Whoa. That was pretty cool. That was. Oh, look at that. He's got a space behind him. Space, 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 space. I like the space thing. Dude, I'm floating, man. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, so when you guys are touring, how are you guys deciding, like, <laughs> what the fuck is <laughs> happening? <laughs> and he's gone. And we're back. I'm sorry. So we're touring now. How are we doing that? Like, for gear? Are we taking a couple oh, guitars, okay. drums? Oh, like, how are we... If it's in the States, we bring all our own gear and uh, we hop in a van and do it that way. If we're in Europe, we'll rent most of the gear, but uh, but Garrett and uh, Chris will bring bass and guitar, you know, and I'll bring cymbals and just odds and ends, stuff like that. Now, Garrett, you bring a couple different guitars. You got a favorite before we lose you again? Oh, I usually play with the Les Paul Gold Pop with, uh, with Bitch Wax. Just a uh, Les Paul's my go to. Yeah. Gold top, less ball traditional. So you you can rent one. You're fine with that. Just renting on the road if you have to. Uh, well, usually I'll have a backup, you know, a Strat or something. But yeah, yeah. Well, one tour rental. The last tour I had actually one of my own guitars over there. Around, so plus we're too tuned so goddamn low that you know, I the, the chances of breaking the string are kind of slim. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just interesting to see like what you would take. I'd be I wouldn't be able to trust anybody. And what about you, Chris? Are you taking any any special bass or? Well, I 
I, I used to bring, I used to bring, uh, I, I used to bring this one. Uh, it was a, it's a jazz bass. It's a, uh, a Fender custom shop of a 64 jazz. And, uh, and I started like feeling like I'm going to end up losing it. And then uh, I had a couple other basses. And then the one that I play now though, is actually all made out of parts that I bought off of eBay. Like I bought the body and I bought the neck and bought the bridge, bought the pickups, bought the tune. the way back. you said the eBay. Yeah. The, the in front of it? <laughs> oh, eBay. eBay. The eBay? Do you want to take them in and chase some kids off your lawn? We can wait. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's Franken base. It's actually, it's right. It's cool looking. Yeah. You know, so, so it's, it's a pre precision body with a jazz neck. Okay. Yeah. You know, so like, I like the, uh, I don't think the pre precision neck is like really like super thick and, uh, and it's more like, uh, like if, I, if we played like, you know, Ramon style music, it would be perfect because you mm -hmm. could just beat on it. But we play a lot of, you know, I don't know, progressive stuff. So it's yeah. easier on a thinner neck. That's all. Well, I just ask because if you have your favorite stuff and you're touring and like I just whenever I go to a show, I always think that it's just you're, you're it would make me insane to see my gear just sitting there and like not on stage. Like who's watching it? You know what I mean? Or you're in the back yeah. or something. It, 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 stuff happens. I'd be like, oh, it's like you know, or traveling with it in a plane, you know. So it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I've been you just gotta you gotta leave it up to the gods. I don't know, man. They let I've us down these past couple of years. <laughs> I know uh I gotta leave I'm, it up to the gods. If you're traveling with like four four guitars and like two pedal cases and you're hopping through airports and stuff, you just gotta pray the stuff arrives and well now so, same thing with a club, you gotta just Well you know you know what's cool is uh that band uh Weed Eater when they were when they were playing in uh playing in Europe, they put uh those air what are they called? Uh it's like a like a tracking device, uh, Apple Air. Oh something. yeah, the, the AirPods. Uh, uh, it, yeah. I don't AirPods, know what it's right? called. Well, you know what you know what I mean. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can it's, track. So they lost all their equipment, but they had those things in their cases, so they knew exactly where it was. Nice. So, uh, so I think that going forward, I'm I think I'm definitely going to do that. Just you know, like maybe crack open like you know, where the foam is in the case and kind of shove it in there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. You want to hide it somewhere where you're not telling everybody on the internet, you mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the story's going to be more than just the four of us. You know that, right? <laughs> I, it's it was funny, more, it was, I, I really wouldn't, I, I wasn't worried about someone stealing it, more of the airport losing it. You know what that's, I mean? That, yeah, I know. Well, that's what I'm saying with a lot of the travel and trying to be, and then trying to make it cost effective. You know, how do you, how do you, how do you do it? Like, so like, obviously, Bob, so you just take a few things with you. You're not going to take your whole drum set with you. You probably have requirements that you need to set up. Well, but... uh, yeah, I mean, if I go to Europe, I'll just bring cymbals and drumsticks. That's it. Yeah. And rent everything else. But, uh, you know, thank God nothing's ever happened. So I've, I've been lucky so far. Yeah. That just seems like it'd be very yeah, stressful. Any specifics? Yeah, it is. Any kind yep. of specifics we need, we just call ahead, you know. Are the clubs mm -hmm. good about that? Uh, well, not to the clubs, but to like our tour manager. Okay, to take care of you. Like that. Yeah. So as I was saying earlier, so to like the. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. go ahead. I totally forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> go, go. <laughs> you go, Garrett. You were, you, I totally forgot what I was going to say. I lost my train of thought anyhow. No, no, like... I was just saying if, if there's anything equipment wise specifically we need. We'll call the rental company ahead of time. You know, if it's a certain head that I want or Chris wants, or Bobby needs two floor times instead of yeah. one, you know, all that kind of. Garrett knows you know, the guy. We'll call ahead. And they'll, they'll it'll be ready to go. You know, it'll be ready. There's so, the cigarette you know. bowl in the scene. There it is. That's wow, it. That, huh? that is so machine papers. That is so analog. <laughs> I know. I'm so analog, right? That's right. I tried to tell you. I know. Dude, I had, actually to get this analog, bro. to get What's this that? set up. I had to. We had a fax back and forth for like a day to get everything set up <laughs> on the fax machine. So it was really a challenge. You know, everyone's smoking now. This is so crazy. I think I've been on this table smoking. This is it. This is the cigarette yeah. industry right here, right? 
Hell yeah. Well, man. you guys have a specific sound. I guess it was the whole point, like trying to travel and being a, a, um, economical. And you know, nowadays, my my yeah, that's my question was how to keep the sound going because you guys do have a sound like I don't think you guys sound like anybody, you know. So with guitars or pedals and effects and everything, you know, how easily you could you know maintain it. I think we keep it pretty you simple. You out on the road. Yeah. Yeah, out on but, the road. I mean, like, we keep it very simple. So, so, I mean, so now we, we get we rehearse ahead of time. We decide what pedals we're going to use. What kind of whatever. If you need an extra symbol or an extra pedal or whatever, we, we work that out at rehearsal, and then then we go out and we decide what we're going to take with us, and we you know we beat it into the ground. Then we go out when we feel we're ready, and then we do it. You know, but you know all we need is marshals and amp pegs, and you know, boom, four or five piece drum kit. We're pretty much ready to go. You know. That's pretty awesome. That is, you gotta understand. For somebody who doesn't obviously in a band, or whatever you know, I did, so like the idea of seeing you guys do that and watching all the bands travel lately and all well, the changes is you know, obviously a little different from the outside. So it's much more curious. How much has songwriting changed for you guys over the years? As a team, are we done anything to change, or just really kind of just evolved as you guys just playing and knowing each other better? I I I, I think the I think the music's. The music is just, uh, it comes from the same place, but I think we just got better at playing. You know what I mean? Like just for the, just from the sheer, just doing it. Has it always been a jam though in, in, in the band from the day one? I, well, I mean, yeah, it was always like it's, it started off just as a jam band with, you know, the only reason I even ended up singing was just because I just would scream in the easy parts. You know what I mean? And, the, and then it's kind of turned into like, oh, now we got a whole band. You know what I mean? <laughs> But first, it was just, you know, three guys getting high, you know, playing in the basement, you know, just like every, you know, 100,000 other bands ever did. Yeah. And now look at you now. You're in the basement 20, 30 yeah. years later. Yeah. Talking in the basement. To basement. Exactly. <laughs> and and, and Progress. I'm, too. You know, like, I'm like an old man, like, tr you know, like a rat in a cage. <laughs> I, 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 yes, <laughs> It's like the sequel, Silence of the Lambs, where you're walking to the basement to a crawl space. I don't know what's going to happen here. <laughs> the back. Yeah. Show them the back. <laughs> so obviously, you guys all work together. But at one point, obviously, show you, them you the got... back part. The back <laughs> what? Uh, no, the what? Back where, where the magic happens? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't show them that. <laughs> Give it a family show. Uh, oh, you guys are too funny. Show them where the duct tape is. <laughs> the what? The duct tape is. The duct tape. The duct tape. <laughs> the, duct tape. the lotion. It puts the lotion on. <laughs> I I'd fuck me. Oh man. <laughs> I'd, I'd fuck. Oh man. I tell you, one time I woke up and my wife was upset in the morning and she looks at me and she goes, "When you were asleep, you literally said it puts the lotion in the basket or it gets the hose in your sleep." <laughs> wow. I don't oh, know where that shit. came from. That's very dark. It was very dark. It's it a very weird, weird couple days. <laughs> she's still with you he is it was a weird week or so to get over it but we're fine <laughs> do, you, do you keep like a length of hose next to the bed it, you know, it, it, yeah <laughs> <laughs> no but that story comes up whenever she can at a group of people that she hasn't met <laughs> makes a great impression <laughs> as far, as far, so are we on a, 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 um, you're touring the new album we're going to do the new album for a while you guys don't have deadlines, do you, for albums and songs, right? You guys just tour and you write when you want. But well, there yeah. is a, and uh, it's really about the production of the, you know, of getting uh, the album printed and all that stuff. So there is a loose deadline. If we miss, you know, if we miss one, we've got to wait like three or four months for the next release date, the available release date. But for, I'm saying for albums, though, you could actually wait a year or two if you didn't want to. You weren't, you're not ob obligated to have to make another album every. No, we're not. No. no. So it allows you to be a little more creative, at least for that part. Uh, definitely. Yeah. How are you? You know, as earlier, I, I discovered earlier that I knew Bob was in, but um, all you guys are are doing Monster Magnet. How does that work with being in one band and then being in another band and keeping them afloat? Because these are both, you know, decent sized touring bands, you know. Well, I'm I'm actually scheduling, I, you know. I, I I left I left Mac a couple years ago, so it's just Bob and you know. 
Okay. But, uh, um, but you know, when we were doing it though, we were just, I think we were, we were touring more around magnet schedule, you know, cause magnet was really busy. Mm-hmm. So you know, we had to be like real surgical about where the, where bitch wax could go, you know, when we would have the opportunity to tour. And sometimes it happened to where we were, uh, leaving a monster magnet tour and starting bitch wax tour, like, you know, within a day of one tour ending. And, um, it was just, uh, you know, we just made it work. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think it was really a problem. Yeah. I mean, we still got to play a lot. Sometimes we'd have no rehearsal at all. We'd rehearse like the day of the first show somewhere. We'd find a recording studio or somewhere to rehearse for an hour. That was pretty, that was pretty wild because, we, yeah. you know, yeah. we were playing that. We'd be on tour with Magnet and not playing any of the bitch back stuff, obviously. And then, uh, you know, the bitch back stuff is pretty yeah, involved. Pre- uh, yeah. You definitely got to rehearse it at least once. So sometimes, you know, we'd have to just rehearse for an hour. And you know what? It worked out pretty good. Well, I mean, you, you're two substantial bands. I mean, I like Monster Magnet, but I, I, I would hate to see, you know, Bitch Wax still needs to be playing as much or more, you know what I'm saying, in my eyes, because, you know, I dig you guys. So it, it, that's why it's cool to hear it like that. Now, with two of you guys still in it, is that going to affect how are you going to moving forward, though? Well, so that just... kind of, well, well st- yeah, it's stuff, kind of, stuff, 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 stuff. six to eight months before it happens, you know what I mean? So everybody's kind of on the yeah. same page. Everybody knows what, you know, yeah, every, you know, every, everybody knows you want to play as much as possible. No one, no one wants to go to work. Everybody wants, you know what I mean? Like, you'd rather be yeah. out for it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, uh, so yeah, you, you know, just everybody's just got to keep talking to each other and it, and it all, all works out. So, well, I can see where all three of you guys being at one point was even better because that way, if the tour gets longer or whatever, everyone's working, you know. But now, if you're not in it, you know, it changed the dynamic just a little bit, you know, for touring. Yeah, we just can make the booking agent known, like say, uh, say you know, well we're we have a tour coming up in June with Magnet, and we'll just say, well we're we're open by August September with with Bitchwax, and we'll work around that period and fit in dates during there, and then we go back to the drawing board. You know, we just work it, you know, every, every few months at a time. You know, it works itself out. You know, we let it, it, like you said, it's it's everything's five six months out so we always work it out you know right who's who's um it's more of the booking agent you know it just feels like a lot though i mean and a lot of bands do this too the shuffling feels like it's it's just so much it feels like it's you know can't get my kids to school on time and uh <laughs> to be balancing you know adults doing their schedules like that it's got to be kind of uh, a lot of work who's i, I do have a couple of questions left though who's doing the artwork for you guys like for your albums and then you have so many cool tour posters. Is it how are you guys get that done? I mean, well, I, I I do a bunch of them, but we but we've paid people to do them to do them though too. You know what I mean? Like uh, the Force Field album cover is uh, where was that guy from? He was uh, he's from Croatia. Yeah, Croatia. Yep. And, really? Uh, and Bob Bob had saw the artwork online and emailed the guy and asked him if we could use it for the record. And they, you know, they worked it out, and that's, uh, yeah. And he sent us a really nice high resolution of it. I, I think I know that guy because he actually did some work for me. Oh, really? I don't know okay. if there's a lot of guys in Croatia sending high image images to you know, this kind of work. I saw it online. It was this type. Of, you know, I was like, oh, I really like your work. You know, for for hmm. uh, any ideas for a logo for me? And he said, no. what was his name? I, I don't know. I have to. I'd have to look on the Instagram and find it. Yeah, and uh, I, forgot, I forgot his name. That's, uh, it's uh, got to be the same guy, though. It could be. It's Larry from Croatia. <laughs> oh, Croatian Larry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was literally the same thing. I was online. I'm going through it. I really love this, this. I love the art and I love the creativity and the, the throwbacks to it. And I'm like, it's really good. So I, I think I mentioned it to him. You know, reached out to him. I was like, oh, cool. And then that's how it happened. Same thing. Was so it I, uh, I, I, Igor? Igor. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I don't know what the fuck this says. Uh, <laughs> Read. Try reading it. No, I, <laughs> I can't fucking see it. That's, the That's problem. right. I'll, t- I'll just tag him in it because I told him, I said, you know, 
I'll give you a shout out. I was going to bring him on, but he, he felt his English wasn't good enough to actually talk about his work. So I okay. wanted to bring him on, give him some props and let some people check out his stuff, you know? Yeah. But he's like, well, no, I can't really, you know, my English isn't that good. So it probably wouldn't be as good. It's and probably I'm, fine. So, so what, what's his name? Igor. Yeah. Or Igor. Or oh, Igor. Uh, right. <laughs> well, it could be. Or A.A. Ron. It could be any of those at this point, right? A.A. <laughs> Ron. A.A. Ron. Yeah. <laughs> be nice. Um, so, oh, yeah, you, you're just... Before you were talking about before you were talking about artwork and yes, he does it late. I think late. Bob do the artwork for posters and the albums and stuff. In the past couple of years or so, but uh, is who you were talking about scheduling before? Like when we were doing the Scorpio record, while yeah. we were recording it, we were rehearsing for a tour with Magnet at the same time, and as soon as we finished recording the Scorpio album and mixing it and all that. Then the deadlines were set for the release. So while we were, went on tour, Matt Chris is sending us pictures and artwork of the album, how it looks back and forth, back and forth. So everything's kind of done. Sometimes things get jammed up like that, but, uh, but uh, you know, we do it through email. And, you know, sometimes everything overlaps like that. It's a little crazy. You got you know, to have some deadlines, you know, as far as, like, we miss we met get the master in bef at the, before the end of January. It was uh, then we'd have to get the next cycle, and it wouldn't be there until uh, September. So yeah. But oh, and we're gone again. I think I think what happens is but doing it that way. I think that's the end of like the Metallica. You end up with no bass again. He he's gone again, huh? He's gone. He gone. Just don't know he's gonna pop up again. I'm gonna wait for him to pop up so I can admit him again. <laughs> And you know, I edited this, so I, I put all the blocks together. So him popping in and out is going to just add such an interesting challenge, creative challenge. To <laughs> I'll have to be like a picture of him or something for that spot when he's gone or something. Something. <laughs> well, it, like it, like, it looks like a pawn, like a chess piece pawn. Yeah. I like the small picture. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. So actually, so Chris, so you were telling me you, you do you do some of the albums. Is it the album stuff? Or are you doing some of the posters? Because you guys, when you're touring, it's like so many different cool poster art. Like, how does that even? Well, so with? The, the social media ones Bob does, mm -hmm. and, and he he does them on his phone while we're touring. And, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's just gotten so proficient at it over the years. It's just like you know. Well, look, I think he's coming back. He's back. He I just let him in. Wow, those are awesome. Those are some awesome pieces, man. I love them. You know, it, it, there's nothing to do all day while you're traveling. So, you know, it, it just keeps me busy. And it's fun to just find, try, you know, I get all the shit that I did. So it's hard not to duplicate it. And I don't think I have. I was I mean, scrolling there's... through your, even though you're the Instagram page. And, and it's, you know, pretty fresh. with a, Like fresh stuff, not like fresh, like we're in, like in Houdini or anything. It's fresh, you know, everything's new, you know, not copied. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, it's it's fun to do. It keeps me busy. And, and so for like yeah, that so, Houdini, you that, like that uh, the Houdini one? The friends come out at Houdini night. around. <laughs> yeah, keep... A lot of throwbacks tonight. A lot. <laughs> oh yeah. I think we should be talking about VHS tapes. And anybody got any late blockbusters we need to bring back when we're done here? Anything yes. like that? Yeah. Betamax. Betamax. Well, that's our, we have our, our live video with the albums coming out on Betamax. Only. Betamax and A track. <laughs> yeah, only A tracks. Got... <laughs> well, you know, some bands are doing it that they have to, like it's out on cassette, actually, which is a cool concept. Uh -huh. But I'm like, I don't have to do with that because it's like special edition. I don't have a cassette player anymore. <laughs> Me neither. I have a little yeah, square yeah. box now that I can't play the music on. You got to go to garage sale and buy a cassette player. Just play that one cassette you got from the one band you went out to see. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, because you can't get anywhere else. It's a special I mean, song. Yeah, I noticed I mean, a lot of bands have been doing that lately, like the cassette thing, which yeah. I guess it's kind of cool, but I don't know. You know, it's, I guess it's more for a merch thing, a merchandise thing. Like, oh, right. I don't know. It's not too practical. <laughs> I, mean, well, I mean, that's what it's like. I, I dig the idea. Know. I think all creative merch is good for a band, but I'm like, but then for me, I, I'm like, I don't have a selling point because I don't have a cassette player and I haven't had one, you know. I'd have to get a time exactly, machine before yeah. I could get my cassette player. You know, I had all the cassettes. I had a billion of them. 
you know, I was that guy, but now I can't do anything with it. Yeah, it's a, Check this out. It's a fun idea. I think it's a cool, fun out. idea, but look why at that. put the money out for it? Eight track. Eight track. There you go. Eight. What are you in the Jets in the Jetsons Museum? What? Black Sabbath. Into A track? A track, yeah. Holy moly. That is hilarious. Right? And that, that works? Cool. Yeah, it works. That's an old version. I mean, it's a new version of an of an A track, right? Is it some kind of like fun? No, no, it's old. And that's this old? Thing's, this thing's from the 70s, the A track. Oh, so this is one of the things that they when they, they in the 70s they wanted everything to look like it was the future. So everything looked like well, an egg. It, I think it's a spinoff it's like of 2001. <laughs> Okay. It's, yeah, 2001 Space Odyssey. It's like a space helmet. So, let me ask you. So, <laughs> those songs, how how bad? Or what songs does it drop off? Like you know, like you know, like when Sticks had too much time on its hands on the Paradise Theater, the, it go right into the song, and also the song would go down, and you'd have to flip it over to another track, and the song would come oh, back and, up again. On, on most of them, Sweet Leaf in the middle of that, and then uh, Into the Void in the middle of that. Yeah. A lot. Whoever did a track hated music. I think that's what it was. They're just trying and to destroy music. It sounds like dog shit. <laughs> yeah, but it's fun. I, 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 I always wanted to put one in my car just for fun. Yeah, I used to. Yeah. <laughs> Those I, know, I would like to put out real. To, I would like to put out real to real, real to real tracks. You know what I mean? <laughs> real boxes. Yeah. Old. I, I don't know if anybody ever did it, but I'd like to actually, you know, like record a song, and then purposely put that eight track click in the middle of the song you know what i mean and make it like, you know just really i, awesome. I would imagine somebody's done it i mean i know there's there are apps that you could play your music on and it was like a record app and it right would, it would play it through your your library right. and the record scratch would go through it like like a different interval oh, not the yeah. same timing but it's like different types of like weaves and bobs and, and stuff in it so you feel like you're listening to a record player yeah I'm right, like, man right. my record player is my record player is way clearer than that. The reason why I like it is because it sounds good. <laughs> you're, you're emphasizing yeah, right. the bad parts of a record player. <laughs> right. right. Doing it you all wanna, wrong. Yeah, that's, you want to yeah, do a record like player? Only, only record Uncompress it. That <laughs> right. That's awesome. Oh. Now I want to hear scratches in my in my digital music. Oh. Oh, I got scratches for you. Oh, and your CD, God. probably. <laughs> yeah, my <laughs> <laughs> I had to get rid of those too. I was uh, just like I just couldn't do it anymore. They're just too much, too much garbage. Um, but I want I want to thank you guys. This has been pretty awesome. You guys are you guys are a lot of fun. I, I've been loving you got your music for years. So this yeah. is actually good for us. I think this is the longest the three of us have hung out in months. Really? <laughs> you guys should zoom uh, once yeah, in a while. Been, <laughs> like we we've been around each other part of the whole year. <laughs> Like at least eight months out of the year already. So, <laughs> yeah, but the way you guys are getting together we did like three is not, tours. you know, you guys get together, it shows that you guys get to enjoy each other. You have a, you know, a good temperament. I mean, I've been to jobs where uh, I work with people after a couple of days together, I couldn't even drive across town with them, you know. Yeah. Sometimes we have to, we have to, uh, you know, we have to room in the same room and everything on tour. I love to. Budget. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But hey man. Mind if I, I get my room tonight. Who's <laughs> okay. getting the blow up mattress, man? Yeah. Hey man. <laughs> who's getting the but, floor? Who, yeah, who's getting the floor? Who's getting the sheet? Oh. Not... Yeah, this is this is like for like guys in their like mid to late twenties, you know, guys yeah, hopping in a van and like sleeping anywhere. We're, we're, we're still, still doing going. it. Really? We're still the first thing I would do is I'd buy you guys all those those those, those pajama blankets for everybody, so there'd be no fighting over it. You know? <laughs> That's oh, the first yeah. tour manager thing I would do. It's pajama really blankets. It's re you're talking about like close quarters and being around people a lot. It's like yeah. we're we're together all the time. That we go in the van together. Then when the tour is over, we start a tour with Magnum. Me and Bob actually share a bunk across from each other. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. It's though. constant. All that thing is the <laughs> sham wow or what's it called the, that the one piece thing you wear it's oh like yeah I know you're talking, yeah it's like a pajama blanket thingy it's it's crazy uh, <laughs> oh it's just, you're just basically put you're putting a long coat on backwards you, you, something like that yeah or back robe on backwards right isn't that what it's it is? like one of those snuggie, ads seen on TV I think it's just, called the snuggie or something yeah the snuggie. <laughs> yes yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> you guys can put the, put the band name on it put a put an emblem Where's on my it snuggie, bro. <laughs> If you guys get the official Big Wax, Dougie. 
Yeah, man. That's a good merch, merch idea. That would be the merch right there. We use it like, every night. Dude, when we lodge, we use the Snuggie. We use the Snuggie. Get my, get my name on it. Oh, I can't get your names on each one of them, too. So no one's yeah. fighting over them. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. The Snuggie, man. You guys are hilarious. But... Right, well, when we get done with this, I'm going to Zoom you, Bob, all right? All right, bro. You can do that. <laughs> we, Garrett, you keep this going, when man. We're done with this, you can do it with each other. No, when we're done with this, I'm coming up. I'm coming out in the basement. You guys can have a band meeting, too. Band meeting, man. Yeah, band, band meeting, meeting, man. Hell yeah. I'm fucking pissed. All right. Band meeting. All right, guys. This, this is good. So when this is, I'll edit it and I'll, uh, I'll send it to you guys or, and let you know when it's up for your guys right. on your socials and stuff, oh, all right? So. so so yeah, it's a new album. It's called Live at Freak Valley. It'll yes. be out in March. I don't know the exact date though. March. I'll put the It'll album. It'll be in March. But it's live at Freak Valley Festival. And for a sneak preview, if people haven't seen it, the video is already up. But now you can have it and you can get it in vinyl and pre-order it too. So we'll push that too. Yeah. I'll put the, I'm gonna put yeah. the links for all of your stuff underneath the the YouTube video and underneath the uh, the podcast too. So when people are fun- listening to it, they can just yeah. click on your links and go to your stuff. When they recorded it, the whole did, concert of it. When they recorded it, we didn't know that they, they were recording it. <laughs> we Which no is idea. probably the best thing ever, right? I guess but so, yeah. probably. Yeah. You know, it was weird too. Is that was the first show of the tour, and so, it was the first show. Yeah. Wow. And so we had we, just got, we literally just landed there. Okay, and, so now I have a question. So was that your best show, or was everything just downhill from there? Like. Uh, <laughs> It was pretty good considering the circumstance. <laughs> we couldn't smoke in the van. <laughs> we oh, couldn't yeah. smoke in the van. We just landed at the airport and we drove like three hours to the festival, but technically we were uh, up for a whole, you know, 24 hours or something already. Oh, that just so sounds like a we suicide mission. We yeah, we went out like 8 o'clock at night or something like that, which was fine, but we were just beyond tired, past tired, but it was first first show of the of the beginning of the tour. It was pretty pretty goddamn good. I mean, we knew we were being recorded with camera. We knew we were being broadcast, but we didn't know they were doing the audio and mixing it down. We didn't know about that. We just we, thought we they were putting it on. We didn't know we had to live with it. <laughs> yeah. well, everything nowadays, every performance we you do, you're going to broadcast it once. You know. Yeah. Everything goes out now live, and no what you do. So you got to right. deliver it. That's just a lot. Though. You know, the fact that you guys spent all that time driving and traveling. And I always said people always forget what it's like to be a band. You know, those 22 hours, you're doing everything. Tired, tired, tired. But you get on stage and you just put throw the energy into it. You know, like, yeah. a, like a, you know, a full energy show. And people don't realize that. You know, yeah, like the adrenaline kicks in too. You know, when you're playing in front of that many people, like it just automatically some. Something just kicks in, no matter how tired. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Sean. All right, take care. All right, good night, Bob. Good night.